Look, I'm not one to make big statements, but this could actually change the way we make vegan meat forever. So while reading your amazing comments on my recent vegan ham video, I came across one by Robert Corradoni, an underground Satan scientist who has all of these secrets for better roast. So after collaborating with him, I'm super excited to share his secret for a juicier and more tender roast. I've never had anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. So let's go get it. All right, so to demonstrate this method, we're gonna be heavily modifying my version of the pig saver ham. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That is juicy. Look at those little layers of fat in there. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Go ahead and grab one five pound bag or 2.27 kilograms of bread flour. Measure out 380 grams into a bowl and then add one cup of water and knead to combine. This is gonna end up as our fat layer. Then dump the rest of the bag into a mixing bowl and add five cups of water after it has been dyed with an eighth teaspoon of vegan red food coloring. Once you've got your balls created, cover them in water and let them rest for one hour. This is gonna give the two compounds, glutenin and gliadin, time to form into gluten so that they stick together while we wash off the starch. Hey, a little food science for you. Hope you learned something. Speaking of which, we're gonna use WTF, AKA wash the flour method, and this time we'll leave some of the starch in the dough, which will lead to a softer texture. Each ball took me three washes, but it may take you up to four. This is what it looked like after the first wash. At the end of the second, you see it's starting to fall apart a little bit. Don't worry about that, it'll come right back together. And here it is at the end of the third wash after it came back together. See this little blob in there? Yeah, you don't want a ton of those. You should only have tiny bits of starch. If you got anything larger than a size of a pencil eraser of starch in your dough, then keep finding and washing those out until only smaller bits are left. Then you're gonna rest them in a strainer for one and a half hours. Now, shh, while those rest, let's talk about why gluten rest is important. It's going to allow excess water from the wash to drain out in this case. It's also going to allow the gluten to form stronger bonds and it will allow the dough to become more malleable. This is what it looks like at the beginning of the rest and after. Incredibly different, right? Now after their long nap, wake them as it's time to start the matrix method. To begin, find a place where you can stretch the dough with leverage. Ideally, you'd have a hook bolted to the wall, but that isn't common, so you can use the back of a faucet like I am. Just, you know, clean it before, okay? Now gently pull. While not gripping too tight, we wanna try and stretch the gluten all at the same time, not rip it immediately. So let your hands slide down while you pull, as needed, to stretch the entire rope. As you faucet yoga your muscle rope, that's a new sentence. You'll sort of feel, and this is kind of weird, the gluten strands snapping in your hands. By the end, you'll get bits of gluten start to pop off. Totally fine. Just go ahead and pull those strands and set them aside. At the end of the pulling process, it should look like this. A straight up rope of haggard gluten, just like raw meat. Kind of gross, but hey, I think it's pretty cool. While you were doing this, your white gluten ball will have been resting and should be super malleable and sticky. What we want to do with this is give it a different texture than the red gluten. So stretch this out like a drum head over a metal mixing bowl. Mine stuck to the side, sealing it totally over the medium sized bowl. This will make all the gluten fibers go in all sorts of different directions, not just one way. And do a little drum offer to the gluten gods. And while it's resting, Go ahead and begin the next step of the matrix method, which is cutting off or pulling off, if you can, little thin strips. I wanna say these were no bigger than half an inch. Try for cutting off quarter inch strips with the grain of dough. For your reference, we're gonna stack these, and I'll show you that in a second. So to an oiled cutting board, so they don't stick, keep cutting and pulling these into little thin strips until you've done it to the entire rope. My strips were each about seven to nine inches long. While those rest, we're gonna make our dry rub mix. So to a bowl, add three tablespoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon of MSG, which is totally optional, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and three tablespoons of mushroom powder. Then mix that all up. Then lay down a piece of plastic wrap. Then lay down your individual strands next to each other, all going the same direction. I'm gonna do some fast forwarding here. I usually don't do that, but I wanted you to see this full process. What we're doing here is building a muscle. So cool, right? You could think of these strips as like little individual muscle fibers. Once you've got your first layer down, my width here was about four inches, but it doesn't really matter. You can build this however you want. Just make sure they're all touching. Use your dry rub seasoning and then add butter. After that's done, build another layer of fibers over your seasoned and buttered layer. What's gonna happen is these individual strips are gonna form back together, but this time they're going to trap 
the fat slash butter and trap the seasonings in between each part of the matrix of gluten strands, giving you more reliable fat and seasoning content after the cook. After your second layer has been seasoned and buttered, take off your drum head fat sheet and lay it on an oil cutting board and score it up into four-ish inch strips. And then layer one of those on top of the two red layers you just built. Since this is fat, what are we gonna do? You guessed it, we're gonna add fat, in this case, again, vegan butter, to the top. Then you just keep building muscle and fat layers until you've used everything up. Cover it in the plastic wrap it's sitting on, and then let it rest for another hour so that those strands can form around the fat and the seasonings and give us that great, complex, meaty texture. After the rest, pop it in a cheesecloth, tie it up, and slow cook it for four hours. I had this vegan ham bouillon left over. You don't have to use this, but um, I had three to four tablespoons left, so I just dumped the rest in. You can use whatever stock you like. After slow cooking, let it rest in the stock for eight hours to form the final texture. The next day, take it out, unwrap it, pat it dry, rub some oil on there, and then some of your leftover dry rub seasonings, then bake for 30 minutes at 350F, 175C, then halfway through at the 15 minute mark, take it out and brush some agave on there, and then put it back in for another 15. Optionally, if you wanna get fancy like me, you can use a torch to char it up if you have one. Again, totally optional. Serve right away. Oh, look at him, he's got a little frowny face. Hmm. I guess he's sad we cut him up, sorry buddy. You can freeze this indefinitely if you have some left over after the initial serve, and it should stay good in the fridge for several days. So if you have ideas on how to make this better or different ways to use this technique, I would absolutely love to hear them. Please put them in the comments below. And if you haven't watched my version of the Pig Saver Ham video, you can click that on your screen right now. And until next time, y'all, be nice to each other and keep cooking.